for those who are new to my channel, here I talk about different opportunities around the world because I live abroad and I spend lots of time abroad. I studied in the US, now I study in Italy. I also worked in Vietnam and I really love traveling and learning languages. And today on my channel, I'm going to make an interview with my friend uh, from America. And we're going to discuss cultural differences between the US and Russia, as it's very uncommon for Americans to move to Russia. But uh, now we're going to ask Travis, who moved from the US to Russia, about his life there and what he thinks about different cultural aspects. So, Travis, welcome to my channel. Elena, thank you so much for the opportunity, and hello from Moscow. Is it cold there now? <laughs> it's not like the stereotypes. It's actually quite warm today. It's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, I see. <laughs> Uh, because now, guys, I'm in Italy. I do my master degree here. Originally, I'm from Russia, but uh, as I said, I spend and like I love to live abroad and travel. So now I live in Italy. Well, Travis, my channel isn't political, so uh, I want to ask you questions about your experience of living in Russia as an American, about different. Uh, differences in culture of the US and Russia and things that surprised you about Russians in the areas like of habits, communication, business, relationships, etc. However, I think we cannot skip uh, the reason why you are in Russia. So could you start from the beginning and tell us your story? Um, how did you move to Russia? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I actually was in the United States Peace Corps before um, in Ukraine, and that's where I got really introduced to uh, to uh, Soviet or rather Russian culture, uh, this part of the world. Yeah. Um, I had le um, I came in uh, a day after Putin had been uh, had been sworn in as president. And, oh, so uh, wow! So you've been in Russia for a while. Well, this is actually in Ukraine when I was in the Peace Corps, so mm -hmm. that's where I yes. really got introduced to uh, to Russian culture, and I just I fell in love with it. The family structure is is much uh, it's much stronger than the United States in a lot of ways, and um, there's just really a lot of opportunities uh, for for Americans. Um, and then I, I returned uh, back to the United States, and then in 2015 I, I moved uh, to here to, to Moscow, and uh, I've been here so off and on since. Why did you decide to leave the U.S. and why did you choose Russia? Oh, there's so many different reasons. Um, for uh, one is is of course as I mentioned like the family um, is that families I feel like tend to be very much closer and even if if you're not in a family structure um, the the friendships are just are much much deeper they're much more intense uh, and there's mm -hmm. just so many opportunities uh, especially as an as an American uh, um, I've heard it uh, called the, uh, the the wild east with cell phones uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of opportunities and adventures here uh, and uh, I, I always say Moscow beckons. There's just so much, so many chances for people like myself. So, what do you do in Russia? What's your occupation? Yeah, Kurt, I'm a lawyer, and uh, I'm just uh, working to get a non-governmental organization with the Ministry of, uh, of Justice, and uh, we're just taking steps t to do that. So, I have a, there's an analogy. Uh, I have my finger in a lot of pies. And so that's one of the things oh. I'm working on. So, and then that's also the first time that I hear this idiom, but <laughs> yeah, I can guess the meaning. Like you are involved in so many things. Yeah, yeah. It, that tends to be the way it is here in Moscow. There's uh, people do a lot of different things, and they have yeah, a lot of different exactly. projects, a lot of juggling. Okay, uh, now let's discuss the cultural aspects, and mm, that's what my channel actually focuses on. So, can you memorize? like your very first days in Russia, did you have a cultural shock? Was it something very unusual for you to be here? What, which things did you find surprising? Well, the one thing that I wanted to impose on your readers, uh, or rather your listeners, the one thing that I really wanted to mention to them is, is Moscow and, and Russia is not a socialist country anymore. Uh, Americans <laughs> especially think that, uh, that Russia is, is socialist 
and in reality, it's it's very libertarian. Um, it's very businesslike, uh, and it's there's a lot of the same products that you'd get in America. And when I came here, um, I had a a, a fremeny, uh kind of a friend who I found out was kind of an enemy. He picked me up <laughs> in his uh, he picked me up in his BMW. And uh, I, w I was with my dog at the time, uh, Konopka, yeah. and uh, we went to the apartment. Konopka is so, so Russian. Yeah, it is. It? it is. Yes, <laughs> it's a, a Russian name for a Russian name for button. And he dropped yeah. me off at the uh, at, at the, the the flat, and I never saw him again. So well, I didn't oh. see him for several months, and so it was just right away. It was a culture shock. Um, I, I taught English while I was here for the first couple of years, and uh, just working for I'd never worked for for Russians when I was in. When I was in Ukraine, I'd worked for um, I'd worked for Americans. Um, I was working with Russian yeah. Russian counterparts, but it was an American organization, the Peace Corps, and it's quite a shock. Uh, the way that that, uh, that that the way that Russians are in, in business is, is drastically different than the way Americans are. I see. And now you're writing a whole book, right? Uh, the name is Why Don't Russians Smile, mm -hmm. and I've read your draft. It was very interesting even for me as a Russian, like I know many things about our culture, but <laughs> even for me it was so interesting, especially comparing the American and Russian culture, and your book has the aim uh, to reveal the mystery of a Russian soul, but let's start from the beginning. Uh, from the title, so why do you think Russians don't smile after all? What is the answer to this question? <laughs> well, it's really complicated, but the best and easiest way to describe it, and I wish I would have came up with this, is uh, Russians are uh, are coconuts and, and uh, Americans are peaches. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so what does it mean? Well, uh, Americans, when you first meet them, they will be very, uh, they will be very open. Uh, they will ask ask you how how you're doing when in reality they're just saying hello. Um, they will ask you about their family, their personal life. They'll share a lot of intimate details with you, and it, this causes a lot of Russians to kind of feel like there's a, a real connection. Uh, but in reality, they just are friendly with everybody. But what happens is, is you get closer and closer to uh, to uh, an American. There kind of is this is this 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 pit like a peach where you can't get past. And so I, I find that, that relationships with Americans tend to not be as deep as with, with Russians. I see. And coconuts means that Russians are hard from the outside, but once you get into, you can make deep connections. Yeah, exactly. So basically with Russians, you, you got it exactly right, Elena. Uh, with Russians, they are very, um, on the surface, they're very cold. Um, and with strangers, they're, they're very cold, and they don't tend to share personal things. Um, and and once, but once you get inside, uh, it, they tend the relationships tend to be much deeper and much more intense. I see what you mean. Uh, did you come up with these names yourself, or Again. there is? <laughs> Again, I wish I would have coined it. I heard it actually 20 years uh, ago. It was compared yes, to, to the peach. That's and, the first time that I hear about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd heard it actually 20 years ago while in the Peace Corps, and in that at that time it was the peach and the egg. Um, but it actually oh. came. It, it was actually two researchers, two two uh, cultural uh, cross cultural researchers uh, that, that came up with it. So. Um, yeah. So you talked about differences like peaches and coconuts however many Americans who have Russian mm, friends they say well why do Americans have problems with the Russians we're not that different after all <laughs> and what do you think are the similarities in our cultures the similarities yes um, one is that we both have this kind of Masonic uh, this this idea that we want to help the world and and we have this this very large power uh, mentality uh, that's one mm -hmm. of the things that's very similar uh, we we both kind of have this frontier mentality uh, that we want to uh, to to overtake lands and 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 kind of convert people to different views uh, we have um, both both of us kind of have European values uh, and um, yeah, so that's 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 one of the two biggest ones. Is the I similarities. See. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what about the differences <laughs> according to your research and your book? Yeah. 
Uh, so I saw a chapter about collectivism versus individualism. So could you talk about that? Yeah, it's it's much easier to talk about the differences than the uh, than the similarities. <laughs> um, when you first come here, you just you really think that people are are just like you, and there's a lot of things that that are very similar with with Russians. But the differences, once you start digging, there uh, there's a lot more differences. <laughs> and, um, and and I think that's the easiest way to describe the differences between Russians and Americans is uh, Americans are the most individualistic uh, country in the world. Uh, there's a, there's a study, the Hofstede study, and they always uh, do like every annually they do studies on how uh, how uh, individualistic a country is, and America continually t is at the very top. In fact, the, the most individualistic, which is at 89 percent, whereas Russia is less individualistic than most European countries and it's closer to China at about 45 percent. I see. So how does that influence on connections between people? With, uh, with, different, with people, the connections... Uh, um, Russians tend to be more tri tribal. They tend to be more mm -hmm. uh, kind of focused on, on themselves, kind of a little bit wary of, of strangers. Uh, and this kind of comes from their history, of course. Uh, uh, as, as you know, as, as a Russian yourself, it's a very deep uh, and, and difficult history. And so that has caused a lot of kind of concern for, for people that are from the outside. And you see that especially in work. I've, I've had the, <laughs> I, I could call it the, the pleasure of, of uh, yeah. working with, with Russians and actually uh, being their employer and their boss. And it's, it's very difficult because... Wow. Yeah, because they tend to be... Uh, very collective, and they they tend to uh, uh, kind of shun outsiders. Yes, and also you have a chapter about social distance. Okay, this is not uh, the phrase for <laughs> coronavirus, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what it's about? Well, the, the social distance is basically the distance of privacy between uh, a culture um, and how much privacy a, a, a person wants. And I've had a lot of a lot of researchers during the Cold War said that there's no actual word for privacy. And I've had a lot of um, uh, discussions with people about this Russians. They say there is a word for privacy. But I would kind of argue that Russians' idea of privacy is much different. I've had a lot of different um, issues with, with landlords, for example, because in America, uh, when you rent a room, you're not supposed to go into the room unless um, it's like 24-hour 24 uh, hour, uh, notice. Whereas here in Russia, you can just do that regularly. And with your friendships, you're, you're almost supposed to share almost anything with your friendships. Whereas in America, it's much more reserved. You have like a work relationship, and then you have a, a, a like private relationships, and they never, they never cross. So, yeah. yeah. But even for Russians, I think it's some, uh, sometimes difficult if you are in business with your friends, because sometimes we don't really know how to act can we be very angry with uh, them or something like this? <laughs> exactly, yeah. I think that's uh, the way it is everywhere, so. And what are the main differences in communications? Uh, because you mentioned before that Americans and Russians uh, like look differently at the question of how are you even. <laughs> yeah, um, in, in America they it, it truly is a mask. Um, um, Americans wear this mask, and, and during the Soviet Union, they said that that uh, it's kind of a sheep's mask that 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 covers a wolf. And uh, you know, people will say, "How are you?" And and the thing I find really fascinating with Russia is is that, and Russian in general, is that first of all, it, there's just so many different levels of meaning, and a lot of times your tone can say so much. Whereas Americans are just very straightforward. What they say is 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 what what they mean. Um, and what I found fascinating is I had a uh, I have a, have a lot of contacts here, and one contact explained to me like how, as as a fluent Russian speaker, as as a native Russian speaker, you can say something and then put something on the end of the word, and it yes. means something completely different that a, a non-native speaker would not know. We don't have that in America. And that's just fascinating. So there, there's all this little, this is, there's this tribalism, this collectivism that I find all the time that, that people are kind of laughing at the outsider. And even if you oh. understand the language, if you're not fluent, they could add something just a little bit 
<laughs> and you don't know what they're talking about. So, yes, that's um, about Russian language. It is very complicated, and we can add uh, either different intonation or some word which will change the meaning completely. <laughs> that's exactly. true. I found that Elena was interesting because because a, a couple of weeks ago. I read an article that said that you can, and it was really disappointing for me, And but any of your listeners that are trying to learn English, um, it's, it's good for them. Uh, in any, any language, there's kind of a base number of, of words that you should learn. Um, and once you learn those words, then you, you, you're pretty set on the language. You could understand most yeah. everything. And with English, it's, tw it's, it's approximately 2,000 words. If you learn these 2,000 words, then you, you pretty much can understand most everything. But with Russian, yes. it's 30,000. Oh, wow. Yeah, 15 times more. That's a huge difference. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, like for example, the, uh, the, the big one that, that's, uh, that's, that's going the rounds on, on, uh, on Facebook that I read recently was is all the different ways to go in, in Russian. There's pages and pages of to go, to walk, wow. to... Yeah. I know uh, that about English because I learned it and I know that in order to survive like you need 500 words yeah. in order to be around upper intermediate you need 3000 words mm -hmm. but in Russian wow yeah. I didn't know that <laughs> uh, another thing that I would like to discuss is the dating culture and differences in relationships between men and women uh, in Russia versus America Mm -hmm. So as you lived in Russia as a foreigner, you might have noticed some cultural aspects, including like dating uh, different <laughs> from your country. So what are the biggest differences that you've noticed in communication between men and women and how people meet each other? Well, I wish I wish I would have uh, I wish I read my book that that uh, that's gone to the publisher already. Um, <laughs> before, before, because I was actually married to a, a, an ethnic Russian, um, and I think that a lot of the problems that we had would have been explained in in that book. Um, would have would have really helped with the relationship. Uh, well, there's just there's where to start. Uh, it's just uh, for one thing I, you got to keep in mind is that is I'm in Moscow, and as you know. Yeah. Everybody says Moscow isn't Russia. So my I've been here, you know, approximately five years, and but my experience outside of Moscow is very limited. So I can't speak for all of Russia, but there is general things that are um, that are very that are very specific to Russians. Uh, one that I found that was kind of interesting was is that usually when people date in Russia, they're dating to get married, whereas in America they're dating just to you know, just to date a lot of times. Sometimes it's for marriage, but usually Russians tend to be a little bit more serious with, with dating. Uh, there's a lot of things Do that you, you think don't... both men and women date uh, in order to get married or only women? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're the, you're probably the expert on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I think in Russia, most of most people prefer to find like one love forever and to be uh, together uh, like loyalty is the most valid thing in the relationship actually yeah but uh, from what my studies is is uh, is I found that um, I found that and in fact like especially here in Moscow like people people tend to cheat on their on their spouses and their, their girlfriends a lot more than in the United States. Um, the only country that probably cheats more is um, is South America or South Africa rather. Why so, do you think so? Um, uh, there's a lot of reasons actually. Um, one was is that uh, it's a lot of it's historical uh, and then uh, like for example during the um, during the revolution uh, there was uh, there was a lot of push to, to kind of get rid of the family unit in that uh, they were they were kind of separating the, the most important thing was the state and not the family uh, but the big thing I think the number one thing historically was World War two is at, there were so many people that died in World War two that uh, that there was just a, a shortage of, of men and so women basically didn't have much much choice other than to do that. And so this that kind of made men um, kind of a, a 
a valuable commodity. And so Actually, they... up to now in Russia, I think uh, in population there is like 48% of men mm -hmm. and 52% of women or uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, still we have lack of men in Russia. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, in part... any school, like classroom, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, usual for us to have 20 girls in a class and five boys. Yeah. That happens everywhere. And I see, so there's just that opportunity for men to do that. And then, um, and then Khrushchev, I, it was fascinating because there's a, there's a, there's, she's an anti Russian, but she writes some really good books. Um, she's anti Putin, um, but she writes some really good books. Uh, her name is Masha. And, she wrote about how Khrushchev actually encouraged um, infidelity, um, you know, cheating uh, in, on some of his policies, uh, and so it's, it's it's historical, definitely. Another one is is that uh, the United States is very religious. Um, it's 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 really a strange culture. Uh, you've lived there yourself. Um, yes. Is that uh, of all industrial countries, it's the it's it's one of the it's very very religious, which is really unusual. It's, uh, I've noticed that in the U.S. people were very religious, and most my, uh, most of my friends would go to the church on Sunday. While in Russia, you cannot really. It's not so usual to meet a friend who would go to the church every Sunday. Yeah. Like, only <laughs> on for Easter or something. Yeah, I find it too with the older people. It's to more of a lifestyle. They they they. They say, at least here in Moscow, they say that they're very religious, but it seems more like kind of a, they become more religious as they come closer to, you know, to, to, to dying, basically. But it's more of a kind of a lifestyle. It's much different the way religion is seen here in, in Russia than in, in America. But America has more, there's more people uh, believe in angels than in any other, <laughs> any other industrial countries, which is a statistic that's kind of interesting. So, yes. <laughs> But I think it's kind of superstitious. Yeah. Do, you, do you think so? Yes. Yeah. Well, Russians are very superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and did you notice any differences between behavior of Russian and American woman? I mean, in the relationships. For example, in Russia, it's common for um, women to like. As to say, not to do anything in a relationship because because men always uh, make the first step. Men always pay on dates, etc. Yeah. Maybe you've noticed something else. Well, I haven't. I I've pretty much stopped dating. I've given up. It's hard <laughs> enough. It's hard enough to date in the United States. Um, but on top of that, you add um, you add the cultural differences here, and then of course so. Uh, Sociology, uh, demographics. Uh, as you get older, there's very there's much much less people to date. The dating pool is much less. And, and since I'm older, it's it's just very difficult in many ways. And so I don't I don't date. Um, but uh, <laughs> but I I, I, had, I have had that opportunity before. Uh, actually, the first person that I went on a date with it was a Tinder date, and mm -hmm. she saw me, and it was the strangest thing. She saw me, and then she led me over to some coats, and she wanted me to buy a six thousand ruble coat. And oh, I just, I, why? I just, why would, I just, why would she do that? I don't know. I didn't. Maybe she thought you were cold or something. No, she wanted, she wanted me to buy her a coat. Uh, oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was my, that, that was my very so first, bad. that was my very first Moscow oh dating experiment. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. I've had some weird ones. And then of That's course, weird. like, yeah. Oh. And of course I've dated a lot of women that I find out later are married, you know, and, um, and and then I've 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 actually met their on accident met their boyfriends or their their husbands and that's kind of <laughs> you know awkward mm -hmm. so just a very very uh, very naive uh, but the, yeah the big difference is is that I always say and and this may get some people a little bit riled up but um, I dating a for me dating an American woman is like dating a man. Uh, I don't think I'll ever date a, an American woman again. They did. They're just too fem feminist. Whereas, too feminist? yeah, they're too feminist. Um, whereas Russians are still very feminine, and I've talked to many Russians before, and and they just feel like it's important to be to be a, a real woman. And 
And a lot of thing, a funny thing about it is, is that American women will say, "Oh, those poor Russian women." But I would take, I would take one Russian woman, and I, I'd put her in a ring with any American woman, like for a fight, and a Russian yeah. woman would just be cleaner clock. She would just win. They, they may seem really feminine. That's, that's one thing that your listeners has to understand is that these women that you, that you see and that you date here in Russia. This is another. This is a warning. I have a lot of warnings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that is that you you these these women seem very you know petite and feminine, and they are. They're very. They have this outer shell of being very soft and very and very you know caring, which they are. But they have a very hard. They're very strong women. They're very strong women, and as you get to know them more, uh, you'll realize how strong they are, and and it's it's a real testimony to to Mother Russia. Uh, how how strong the women are? Yes, like uh, on the one hand, women never pay on dates, and they seem to be <laughs> so like feminine. But on the other hand, uh, they can do anything, as we uh, say. And maybe you know about the uh, revolution of 1917 when wives followed um, their husbands to Siberia and they uh, took the punishment with their husbands and wow. uh, like they were so strong and uh, <laughs> maybe even now women are capable to do of such things in Russia as well <laughs> yeah yeah and and I was I was married to a Russian for uh, 10 years and and I was just amazed at at how as the years went on, how how strong she was, and how uh, there's just there's just this inner strength, and I think a lot of it comes from uh, from from men being you know the alcoholism, and uh, and men not being there for for their children because there's so many opportunities to to cheat that women have to basically be the the, the breadwinners. They have to be the ones that take care of the family. And what's what's interesting is is that I, I was dating a, a, this beautiful Russian uh, in. Uh, in in America and uh, she was we were in my house and I, I, she was sitting there just and you know relaxing on the couch and so I got up and I started to sweep the floor and I look over at her and she's got this weirdest look on her face and and I says well what's wrong and she says oh I've, I've just never seen a guy do that before you know it's like yes because in Russia, it is common for women to clean the house, look after yeah. kids, wash the dishes, yes. uh, wash do it all. clothes, <laughs> uh, and do everything yes. for the household to cook and to work as well, go to work. Uh, but when the husband comes uh, back home from work, everything at the house must be clean. Uh, a husband must uh, have a good dinner, etc. You know. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, yeah. It's and and it, what's really inter very interesting too is that I I found this with one of my landlords is that she had a son that was probably in his thirties or forties, and there's this idea that that the men there's a lot of single men out there that are just basically taken care of by their, their by their mothers, and they never get married. They just they're just supported by their mothers, which I found very yes, interesting there is too. Such thing. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, in Russia, men uh, always are so mannish, you know, uh, they act very mannish and always oh, manly, make manly. gifts, give flowers, <laughs> not for birthday, but without any occasion. Yeah. Uh, is it the same in the U.S. or there is less of such behavior? No, there, there isn't. What I, what I love about, what I loved in past tense, what, what I loved about dating Russians is they made me more of a man. They made me feel more like a man. And if you have expectations that a person should be more manly, then that person becomes more manly. And when you always have to buy the person flowers and you have to be romantic and you have to open the door, yeah. it makes you feel better as a man yourself. Whereas there in America it's it's gotten to so extreme where men are just afraid to approach women because of, of possible like sexual harassment charges and things like that and so men are kind of like weak um, but um, but but men here are, are there's yeah it's kind of this frontier kind of uh, tribal I'm the man and I'm protecting the woman 
very very different yeah. but it's it's not it's not that way in America it's uh they don't they don't tend to buy gifts very much um and the women can ask out the man also and why do you think it's so popular uh, on the internet and everywhere uh dating a russian woman you know you can find it on youtube or anywhere like how to date a russian woman how to find <laughs> woman in russia why in russia why is it so popular well you've been to walmart in america right yeah and you've seen the women in walmart right but uh i think it's not only about the appearances take any other country like there are so many uh, beautiful women not only in russia why is this so popular on the internet because i made like a small research mm -hmm. and everyone uh, makes lots of search on the internet like how to date a russian woman <laughs> Well, I, I think, again, that's kind of historical, is because after the fall of the Soviet Union, there were a lot of women that wanted to marry Russian men, or American men, rather. And another thing is is that, of course, uh, a lot of the Russian women are white, which is attractive to, to you know white American men. And, of course, they do housework, and they take care of the family, <laughs> and they, they do a lot of the things that, that American women wouldn't. So it's 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 nice, like as far as as for as far as like for sex, for example, is that you know when you're when you're with a Russian woman, she's not gonna like tell you to to turn this way or turn that way or do this or do that. And American women do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just yes. <laughs> it's just you know it's like you're out, it's, it's, you know? it's it's this constant uh, fight, like who's who's yes. in charge almost in America. So. American men actually want to date Russian women because they like the conservatism and that Russian women will do everything in the household, etc. But Russian women want to find an American husband because they don't want to be housewives and they want to be more free and they think that Americans are more free in this point, you know? So it's very controversial. <laughs> They want like different things, I think. Yeah, and that's that's where the cultural clashes start. Uh, before I before I got married to my Rush to my Russian wife, um, she my my uncle who has a, a, a Spanish uh, wife. Um, he he warned me. He says, you know, you're never really going to be. You're never going to be as close as you can be with an American. There's always going to be this mystery there. And I think it's even more so with Russians. Like, there's just, even with, with my Russian wife, I never really, there wasn't this depth that I maybe would have had with an American wife because it's just, the cultures are just so different. I see. By the way, before, uh, you've mentioned that Russian men um, drink a lot, yes? Yeah. So can we talk about consumption of alcohol in Russia versus the U.S.? By the way, when I was at Christmas break, I went to my friends uh, in in Ohio, uh -huh. and I was surprised that on the Christmas Eve, no one actually drank alcohol, or maybe one, you know, one glass of wine. That yeah. was it. Yeah. And it was unusual for me because in Russia, <laughs> on New Year's Eve, it's crazy. Like everyone drinks like crazy. So what do you think about consumption of alcohol? Well, the good thing is, is that since 2016, from 2003 to 2016, the amount of people that are that the amount of people that are drinking has dropped by 43 percent. So mm. the consumption has dropped immensely. So there is a lot of progress there. Um, yeah, it's 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 really interesting. Uh, what happens is is that I think we all have our vices. We all have those things that uh, that that we do to escape. And uh, Americans have food. You know how fat they are. Um, and they also have a lot of pill popping. They they use pills instead of alcohol. Uh, Russians, I think a lot of it's just because of the history. Uh, from everything that I've read, it just appears like the history is that's kind of an escape from from the harshness of life uh, I think it's it's 
I, in any culture, what's fascinating to me, and I didn't include it in this edition, but I, I should definitely include it in the second. We, we actually will include it in the, uh, the second edition. There's actually six authors in the first edition, is how similar uh, Russians are to African Americans, to, to black Americans. Um, because African really? Americans. Yeah, yeah, and which it was fascinating to me because I've been around black Americans in. Uh, in Washington DC and I'm like and it just it struck me as like oh my gosh they're almost they're very very similar and the reason is this is that you have people that are oppressed because yeah. both um, the uh, the Russians they didn't actually lose uh, serfdom until what about 1860 they were basically slaves until 1860s all Russians and they were still slaves be, until the revolution and then of course they were slaves during the Soviet Union and so what happens is, is when you have a society and a culture that just that pushes people down that pushes them down the the men tend to be very docile they they, they tend to kind of uh, be very weak and they tend to drink mm -hmm. a lot and that's the case with African-American men and then what happens is, is the woman has to step up. The woman has to be very strong. And so she starts supporting the family. And she's the one that kind of takes care of everything. And, and that's, that's exactly how it is in both Russia and in, and, and in, uh, in, in the African-American community. I think a lot of it's because they're, they're oppressed. Yes, actually in Russia, I think we're used to it that uh, mother is the most responsible person in the family like if there is any emergency or anything the mother is usually who has to decide these problems but of course it depends on different families yeah exactly so. and what about differences in business where do you think it's easier to make your way up the career ladder? <laughs> and in America, of course, there is like American dream. Yeah. But where do you think it's easier? And if American dream is real? Well, I want to make a plug for, for uh, an incredible author. Um, he helped me with the title. Actually, I was coming up with a title. And his title of his book is... Um, why Russians don't smile, and his name's Luke Jones, and he's actually the expert on this. Um, he's been on uh, Russian television and everything else, and I could give you the details about him later. He could he could explain more about business. Um, when I was uh, here in 2016, I met uh, a, a businessman, and I've I've been fortunate because of my education and because of my age. There's not too many people that come from America to Russia to live and to become citizens. And so I meet a lot of people that are really incredible. And there was a man that I met, and what he said was, is when George Soros came, I don't, I don't know if you or your listeners know who George Soros is. Have you heard of George Soros? No, actually, no. Okay, he's this famous billionaire, and he's, he's very democratic, and he supports a lot of democratic causes, and he supports a lot of, um, he supports a lot of democratic causes in other countries that, that, that really hurts uh, Russia. But what happened was is that in the 1990s he came over to Russia and he said that he was going to invest money into Russia. And what happened was is that he came in uh, and he basically told people the way things should be and those the Russians drove him out. And uh, he's become very anti-Russian anti because of that. He's very anti-Russian now. And, he, and the person was explaining to me, he says, don't blame don't blame Putin for everything it wasn't Putin's fault you know it, it's it's like yes, exactly. yeah everybody in the West blames <laughs> Putin for everything but it's like this was in the far the Far East that this happened and he was basically yes. saying that if, if you have a hard life here don't blame there are people who uh, say that any problem in Russia is because of Putin <laughs> exactly exactly and so I thought that was really strong because yes. that was really incredible there's a beautiful saying there's a similar saying in, in, in English um, it's like when in Rome do like the Romans do um, but but I love the Russian version of this don't go to the go, don't go to the monastery and 
and make, don't uh, make your own rules. Your rules yes. in, uh, in another monastery. Yeah, in yes. another monastery. What is it in like, Russian? Can can you say it in Russian? Uh, <laughs> не иди в другой монастырь со своими правилами, which yes. means that if you are not uh, in your society but in another some country or group, you cannot put your rules there because you have to follow the rules in that society. Exactly, exactly, yes. And that's so true with Russia. And I think it's just because of the history, because outsiders have invaded Russia and it, it caused nothing but but terrible things. And there's just this this really strict hierarchy, and it, that that that's a lot of because of collectivism, but it's just it's 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 really difficult to become. It's all built on relationships here. Mm -hmm. um, yes. There's a there's a famous saying um, in Russian that it's better to have a hundred friends than a hundred rubles. And oh my goodness, it's so true. And my my American friends they say, "Are you working now?" And I say, "Yes, I'm like going to this conference or this conference," and they're like. That's not working. I'm like, you don't understand Russia. <laughs> it's all about it's all about <laughs> yeah. business cards. It's all about. And then just one last thing about the business, and we can move on, which I found really incredibly funny. Was I met this professional translator? She she does simultaneous in interpretation, which is really rare. She was yeah. at the top of her field, and she wow. would she we had this terrible business meeting, terrible business meeting, where I was kind of the fool of the business meeting. I realized later there was like six of us and I was like, the, I was the idiot in the meeting. Um, and I just, I finished afterwards and the first thing, and I was just, just depressed as, as hell. And after the meeting, she says, well, that went really well. And I was like, oh my God, what are you saying? What do you mean it went really well? I thought it was terrible. And she says, no, in, in, in Russian business, in Russian business meetings, people yell and scream and and just like and just carry on and be very emotional russians are very emotional i like it like because they're so, like women are emotional and men are emotional and she says that in these meetings they just would just like yell and scream and you know do everything which you'd never do in america and then afterwards they'd go out and, and they'd make a deal and they'd sign the papers and they'd, they'd, they'd do a contract and and yeah that was just a shock to me so wow so you saw that <laughs> Uh, it was very different in behavior and how yes. emotional they are and yes. everything different in business. <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, and also your <laughs> book has a chapter in search of the Russian soul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, the concept of the Russian soul was conceived by Russian writers. You probably know that by Tolstoy yeah. and Dostoevsky. By the way, have you read any of their books? I have, I have, mostly Pushkin. Yes, so. and they explored the mystery of Russian ethics and lifestyle in their novels. And the idea of the Russian soul says that Russians have their u unique way of living, alternative to that of the Western world. And the core idea is that while influenced by both Eastern and Western values, Russia always finds its third way, you know, uh, but no one can really pin down what uh, this means. And for you, uh, when you were doing your research, so what do you think uh, this means, the Russian soul? Well, the, there's one quote that, there's two quotes actually that I what can quote you. What is this yeah. mysterious Russian soul? Yeah, well, How somebody, do you understand it? somebody described it earlier to me, and I can't remember what the word was, is that that, that somehow, I'm actually going to talk to the guy tonight, we're going to go out for drinks, um, and he explained like that Russia was kind of like this golden, this golden bridge between East and West. And, yes, which it's makes, not East and it's not West. Yes, <laughs> which I just haven't found fascinating. Um, and I just, I, I, I really, I, the, the, sub, the subtitle of, of the book, I wanted to make it like In Search for the Russian Soul you know, in search of, the, of what the Russian soul is. And, oh, where do I start? It's just, it's just amazing because it's such a land of contradictions. It's, everything is a contradiction. And when you, th there's just so many different contradictions. And there's one quote in the book, it's, I think it's, it's actually on the first page in the preface. And it says, there's a guy from the 17th century, and he says, I don't know anybody that understands Russians. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I, I don't know anyone. 
And then, of course, uh, the most famous quote that a lot of your listeners that are older would probably know is that um, uh, Churchill, uh, Winston Churchill, he said that uh, as, as the Cold War started, he said that Russia is, an enig is a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Basically, it's just a mystery and a mystery and a mystery. Uh, and so, and I had arguments about this on Facebook and a lot of social media. A lot of Russians don't even think that it exists, the Russian soul. But I, I'm a firm believer, and I, I'm going to come to the bottom of it. I'll be the first American to really understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is why you are in Russia to discover the Russian soul to finish your book. <laughs> and uh, what? piece of advice would you give for those who plan to move to Russia or travel to Russia and what should one do if he is a coconut uh, no if he is a peach amongst the coconuts <laughs> well uh, the best advice that I could give and I, I, I mentioned this earlier to you is don't fall in love until you read my book <laughs> don't <laughs> because there I wish I would have I wish I would have done the research before because there's just so much about different um, different things and different mentalities and uh, what you should do if you're a peach among coconuts is you should be you should plan to be bruised a lot so <laughs> Yeah, to and be bruised? Uh, what to do be, you mean? To, well, a peach is bruised. Like if it's a coconut and yeah. you get bruised, you, you're going to get hit a lot, especially in uh, Moscow. That's um, what you mean. I see. <laughs> but uh, beyond that, I think that you shouldn't bring up like personal things until somebody else does. And uh, just remember the the saying, and you you could pronounce this in Russian, is that uh, they uh, a person that smiles is an idiot. Basically, is 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 crazy. Uh, what is what is the saying? Uh, only idiots smile. Yes, we have such saying. Yeah. What what is it in Russian? I can't remember. Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting Russian <laughs> while I'm living here in Italy. It says "smiyutsa tolko duraki," something like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Travis, thanks a lot for this interview. It was very interesting to hear about your experience of living in Russia and comparing the cultural aspects of our, so to say, controver controversial and opposite countries versus uh, uh, common, no, individualism versus, uh, I forgot the word. Collectivism. <laughs> yes, collectivism and being peaches versus being coconuts it was very interesting thanks a lot for the interview and good luck with finishing your book i guess thank you very much alana thank you bye bye